2016, fire broke out on the Caribbean fantasy. More than 500 passengers had to abandon a ship when a fire broke out. It was only two miles from the harbor in San Juan, Puerto Rico, but the burning ship had to be towed to shore four days later to put out the fire. Today, with some notable exceptions, most major U.S. ports are grossly unprepared to fight an ocean ship fire. It's a growing danger. Brian Peterman is a retired Vice Admiral of the United States Coast Guard. If one of those vessels has a problem, the response capabilities aren't going to be there, and that could mean a vessel sinking offshore, releasing large amounts of oil, and then having a major problem, maybe like we had in Prince William Sound. It wasn't supposed to be this way. After the Exxon Valdez ran aground in Prince William Sound, Alaska, Congress passed the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. The law required tank vessels to ensure by contract or other approved means the availability of personnel and equipment necessary to remove a worst case discharge from a fire at sea. Then, in 1993, interim salvage and marine firefighting rules were added to save lives and property. But instead of having contractually bound firefighting vessels respond to an incident, they have been using a less reliable vessel of opportunity approach. They're betting that a slow moving tugboat will be available if fire strikes. Experienced towing operators say that's unlikely. They say most salvers need a minimum of 18 or even 24 hours to respond to a ship fire just a few miles offshore. Say a fire broke out, the first step would be finding a vessel that can go offshore, contracting with that vessel, then loading your portable firefighting unit on the boat and then getting it offshore. And that's going to take some time. In your opinion, why, why At a recent congressional hearing, fire, a top U.S. official admitted that the Coast Guard has no ability to enforce compliance or ensure a rapid fire response. I think that most of the panel members here would agree is because the Coast Guard has not been aggressively enforcing the compliance. In fact, when the gray shark caught fire off the New Jersey coast in 2015, it burned for four straight days. But now, the Rapid Ocean Response Corporation has a solution. Its high-speed offshore firefighting vessel, the Fort Ripley, stands at the ready. Stationed in Charleston Harbor, the 64-foot state-of-the-art fire response boat can travel at a top speed of 30 knots with a range of 500 nautical miles. Tugboats, by comparison, generally chug along at just 10 knots. ROC will build a fleet of 20 high-speed firefighting response boats and deploy them along the coastline of the continental U.S. They will protect the ocean environment and big population centers and provide rapid firefighting services to commercial vessels operating within 50 nautical miles of the U.S. as federal regulations require. We have the capability of any type of fire. We're, we're foam capable for chemical or petroleum fires and regular water for structure fires. This boat would be almost like uh, having a fire department in any port, like a mobile fire truck. We're presenting a rapid fire vessel to respond immediately to an offshore incident for a fire or any other incident to be the first responders there. It's the first commercial vessel in the United States to use the Volvo Penta IPS drive system, which is a highly efficient propulsion system. There's a 4,000 gallon a minute fire pump on the vessel, ready to go at any time. There's a foam tank on the vessel. The operators on board, they're fully licensed to operate in the ocean. So the difference between you know, having to find a crew and find equipment and find a crane operator to get on board versus not having to do any of that, obviously is you know, hours and hours of advantage. If the Coast Guard enforced its rules, the Fort Ripley and others just like it would be the most logical way to respond rapidly to an offshore fire threatening major U.S. cities. ROC has seen a weakness in protecting the United States from environmental and marine safety kind of incidents. It's a safety of life at sea issue. It's an environmental protection issue. It's an economic issue. With ROC coming into the game, hopefully the Coast Guard now will start requiring vessel operators to bring that capability to their operations. ROC, 
the Rapid Ocean Response Corporation, ready to respond when called.